good morning and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. When I preached the first week about giving up something for Lent or not giving up something for Lent, it never occurred to me that you would be giving up coming to church for Lent, so let's not make it a habit. But thank you for joining us here this morning. I want to also thank a few people, in particular DeCorey and Ben and especially Katie for scrambling to put together all of the equipment that we would need in order to do this today. For Jessica to redo the bulletin so you would have all of the hymns to sing along with us. To Jennifer for rewriting our prayers of the people to include our current situation. To the choir that is here to help lead us in music and the greeters that joined us this morning to make sure that you didn't come in the building, uh, which was a little different. But especially to all of you who are joining us in this new journey. Uh, this is quite a new spiritual experience for us, so we are very grateful that you are in this with us and that we are all together once again to celebrate the Eucharist. I'd also like to thank the bishop who is here with us this morning for your guidance, your pastoral direction, your leadership, and especially your presence. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. It's, uh, I wish I could say it's good to see you, but it's good to see the camera in front of me and know that uh, so many are out there throughout the state, and really probably throughout the country, worshiping with us today. Um, I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the efforts of this cathedral staff and their choir for helping us put together this service so that we can be together. I'm grateful for all of you who have uh, just been so patient as the news has changed throughout this week related to the coronavirus in the many ways that you're being diligent and careful in your own observance of how to best, frankly, tamp down this, this, this horrible virus, which is, frankly, permeating our lives. So thank you for all that. Thank you for your faith. And thank you for being with us this morning. The liturgy will begin in just a minute, but let me remind everyone that uh, uh, while posture you assume at home, whether it's sitting in your favorite chair or standing for hymnody or kneeling for prayer, that is entirely up to you. <laughs> and I need to also go one step further and say um, that if you need to fill up your cup of coffee in the middle of things, that's okay as well. But I'm glad that you're taking this bold step of faith with us as we worship together live from St. Andrew's Cathedral. God bless you. Thank you.
God's mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who 
Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to drink water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me. The hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world, the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, o Christ.
They are outside these walls. And some, perhaps within these walls on most Sundays, who need to yet again be reminded of the life-giving, liberating love of Jesus Christ. When I was a, a little bitty kid growing up in Thousand Oaks, California, I, I, I was really developing as a my spirituality and, and wasn't quite sure what that spirituality was all about. And I, I can remember vividly, and, and I, I'm always thankful for this, I remember vividly how, how my mom made a point of impressing the importance of attending church. I remember vividly when, at that time, I think it was second graders had a first communion class at our Episcopal Church. And I remember vividly going through that experience and learning about first communion and learning about this holy meal to partake of and learning about the ways that the church and the community of believers fills our soul. I remember vividly some of that. Mostly what I remember was how we were supposed to not squirm at the altar rail and that we were supposed to reach out with right hand above the left like that to receive and how the cup would be handed to us and we'd take the bottom to, to help us receive. That's what I mostly remember from that period of time. But what has impressed upon me throughout the years was how important that experience was. A few years later, when I was, I, I think, maybe junior high school, maybe or even earlier than that, maybe sixth grade, was when um, me and some other folks, young people my age, were recruited by a lay reader at our home church to be acolytes, to be acolytes. And, um, I, I can't tell you that I did it because this bursting in my soul made me want to be an acolyte. Um, I, I followed mom's instructions. <laughs> and, and, and my friends were all doing the same thing, so I went and took part in that. And was trained and learned how to be an acolyte and then a crucifer. And what I remember about that experience was I liked it. I really enjoyed it. And, and I can remember as a high schooler, you know, think about this for a second. As a high schooler, waking up and thinking, ooh, I get to serve at 8 o'clock service today. An 8 a.m. service for a high schooler? Come on. <laughs> but I was excited about that. I was excited about being on the altar. I liked it. Something about that really spoke to me and really filled my soul. Years later, I wandered back in the church after my own spiritual quests, if you will, and spiritual journeys, and, and knelt at the altar rail for the first time in a few years. And again, felt a sense of belonging, a sense of wholeness, and a sense of being that I just couldn't quite explain. But something that led me to want to look deeper and, and, and search deeper, and that's what I did. I searched deeper, got involved in some ministry at the church, namely youth ministry. You know, somebody in their mid-20s shows up at church, what do you do for the big group of youth? But that was a call to me, very much of a call, and very much of an experience of feeling like, God's reaching out to me. God's reaching out to these young people. God's reaching out and saying, you've got something to share. And then a couple of years later, folks are encouraging me to think about seminary, and I'm realizing that perhaps this is how God reaches us. Perhaps God doesn't, isn't going to send a lightning bolt on everybody. Perhaps God's not going to put a burning bush in my way. But perhaps this is the burning bush. These young people these community believers. So that led, obviously, to calm, commission on ministry, led to seminary, led to the priesthood. And what I share with you now about being a priest in the church is coming from a, the most vulnerable, most honest place I, I, I can speak from. But I can vividly remember as a new ordinary you wake up, I don't know about y'all, but one of the things that I often think of when I wake up is where's that first cup of coffee? Right? But I can 
vividly remember waking up after being a new ordinate, brand new priest, serving at St. Thomas Diamond Head, and, and thinking about where's the first cup of coffee coming from? What day of the week is this? And saying, oh, it's Sunday. I get to go celebrate the Eucharist. I get to go celebrate the Eucharist. Um, I'm guessing you all probably have had that same experience before. And I'm looking at the clergy out there as well that probably know what I'm talking about. I was, it was almost like I was a little kid again saying, oh, I get to play a baseball game today. But it was more. It was I get to go celebrate the Eucharist. I was so alive with that. And it filled my soul and it made everything else that I might have had to deal with on that particular day okay. Whether it was a Sunday or a Wednesday morning Eucharist, it was like, I get to go do this. It filled my soul. And it still does. I still wake up on those days, Sundays, whatever other day of the week it is when I get to go celebrate the Eucharist. And I say, I get to go celebrate the Eucharist. I get to lift up my heart to God, and I get to do it in the midst of a number of believers who know what I'm talking about when I reach out to the Lord. Know what it means to reach out and to receive. Know how it makes us feel. I know today I'm sharing this Eucharistic experience and sharing my own really Eucharistic theology with all of you, and I wish we were all together. From the different corners of this diocese, I wish we were all here in one place, but I'm grateful. I'm grateful that we have a means to where I can share this message with you, that I can tell you how important this experience is to me, and tell you that I know how important the experience is to you as well. To say, we are one church. We are one church. And today we collectively lift up our hearts to God in spite of the fact that we're separated. In spite of the fact that the worship services are suspended. In spite of the fact that our hearts are breaking with anxiety and concern. I'm grateful that you're there. I'm grateful that you're safe. I'm grateful that we're doing what we can to make this service available to you, but also for the larger picture in the world at large, and perhaps tamping down this horrible virus which is infecting so many people and will infect so many. Thank you for your patience. And thank you to all the clergy who are out there offering services in so many amazing and creative ways. And thank you to the lay leaders who have stepped up and said, we're going to come together as a small group, maybe, in someone's house. I saw someone was having a house party to watch services at St. John's and Ocean Springs. I'm grateful for the people who have tuned in this morning and are taking part. I'm grateful for the choir here. I'm grateful for the clergy at St. Andrews and for all of you who, like me, share this sense of, of love and this sense of connection that's made possible through these worship experiences. I don't want to talk about trying to make lemonade out of lemons, but i got to also say that maybe, just maybe, this experience might help lead us to something else. Maybe it might help lead us to ways that we can bust down the walls that sometimes exist. And maybe help us reach outside of our church walls and into the community at large and into those fields that are ripe for harvest. And bring people into our faith communities in virtual ways and down the road in physical ways. Maybe, maybe this is our opportunity to pastor to people at their most vulnerable, 
to reach out to people that are most vulnerable in their, in their anxiety and concerns. Maybe, maybe we can all find ways to collectively lift up our hearts and praise, lift up our hearts in thanksgiving, and lift up our hearts in blessing. As an affirmation of our faith, will you please stand and join me in reciting the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternity of God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, be God from God.
For those in quarantine, the shut-in and the infirmed, help them find peace. Keep them in good health and renew their minds and spirits. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all hospitals, doctors, nurses, and staff, strengthen and protect them as they minister to the sick, relieve stress, and provide the resources and space to meet the needs of all the infirmed. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all first responders, Guard them from harm and grant them strength and courage as they respond to calls for help. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all service industry employees and those who must work even as their communities shut down, keep them healthy, bestow the resources to best care for themselves and their families, and assure them in times of financial and medical anxiety. O oh God, hear our yeah. prayer. For those experiencing financial loss and uncertainty of resources, have mercy on them, alleviate any fear, and provide for them daily bread and wages. O oh God, hear yeah. our prayer. For the leaders of this community, the nation, and the world, help them make sound and safe decisions to best secure the future of our planet and its people. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all schools, students, teachers, administrators, and school staff, keep them healthy and in good spirit to learn. Feed those who will go hungry without guaranteed meals, and shelter all students who have no place to live. O oh God, Hear our prayer. For all scientists and those working to find a cure, inspire them towards your truth and help them discover and disseminate a vaccine and a cure. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all media and journalists, protect them from all harm in their reporting and move them to be a vector of truth and certainty and never fear or panic. O oh God, Hear our prayer. For all places of worship, embolden them to be beacons of hope and love and joy, and keep us and help us to gather however and whenever we can, be it online or in person, to give you praise, O oh God. Hear our prayer. For clergy and lay leaders of the church, help them minister among their people, Fortify them to be faithful in their care of others, to persevere in prayer, and to build up the family of God in new and creative ways. O oh God, hear our prayer. For the young, spare them from harm and fear, and keep them a joyful sign of your love and light. O oh God, hear our prayer. For all parents, Build in them strength and fortitude for the time ahead, and give them words and witness to be wise counselors and compassionate caregivers. O oh God, hear our prayer. For peace in our hearts and calm in our communities, in the cares and occupations of our life, may we not forget you, but remember that we are ever walking in your sight. O oh God, Hear our prayer. Stir up in us a spirit of compassion and tenacity for the time ahead. Amen. Move us to check in with loved ones who are most vulnerable and those who are in isolation or quarantine. Amen. Ease our fear and anxiety that we may share our resources rather than hoard them and extend a helping hand to all in need. Amen. Inspire us to share the good news of your love and hope. Amen. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, healer of the sick, rock of our salvation, and Savior of the world. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. done. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and no longer repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your way. God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Dear people of God, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace to everybody. Please be seated. We will continue with the service in just a moment, but I do want to mention that if you're following along with the service leaflet made available through St. Andrews on their webpage, I will be adding a couple of prayers at the end of the Eucharistic prayer. Uh, my intention of adding these prayers is uh, simply to try to pull us all together in a spiritual communion community that we are. Uh, thus, these prayers, I, I pray, will serve to strengthen us in the bonds that right now are flying all across the virtual worship space that we share on this moment, or at this moment. Walk in love as Christ loved us, giving himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing.
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of, the, of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory, and particularly for the blessings given me. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray to you, come into my heart. We unite ourselves with you and embrace you with our whole hearts, soul, and mind. Let nothing separate us from you. Let us serve you in this life until, by your grace, we come to your glorious kingdom and an ending peace. Come, Lord Jesus, and dwell in our hearts in the fullness of your strength. Be our wisdom and guide us in right pathways. Conform our lives and actions to the image of your holiness and in the power of your gracious might, rule over every hostile power that threatens or disturbs the growth of your kingdom, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Christ. and you, you have, have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Look mercifully on this, your family, almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore through Christ our Savior. And may the blessing, and may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.